everyone, I'm Faith Mackey. Th hello everyone, I'm Faith Mackey. Thank you for joining our annual State of NASA. Today's address follows the release of President Biden's fiscal year 2025 budget proposal earlier this afternoon. Today, we will hear about how investing in NASA is an investment in America. With the president's budget, NASA will maintain U.S. leadership in space exploration, improve life on Earth through innovation, and humanity's return to the moon under the Artemis campaign, and more. Throughout the program, you'll hear from NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy, Associate Administrator Jim Free, and senior leaders from each of NASA's mission directorates. Now I'll hand it over to Administrator Nelson to get us started. Hey, everybody. A bunch of us were down at the Cape last week, and we watched alongside the rest of the world as the pioneers, most recent ones, the astronauts of Crew 8, they lifted into the Florida sky, into the heavens. You can't uh, have that experience without being emotional. It's a privilege not just to launch, to watch a launch, but to revel in the storied history of NASA. At the heart of the Kennedy Space Center stands a very tall building, a facility 40 stories tall that houses NASA's mightiest rockets. And when you stand on top of that building, you look across the landscape where the sky meets the horizon you see that sweeping panorama. You see the scrub oaks, the march grass, the palmettos, bordered with sandy beaches. And those beaches are punctuated with launch pads where Apollo 11 rose to the moon, where Artemis II will rise to return humanity to a lunar threshold. And when you stand at the top of that vehicle assembly building and you take that great sweep, you get a view that might be one of the rarest sights on Earth. You can see with unusual clarity the past and the future at the same time. Today, we, the NASA family, are the stewards of that bridge where the past and the future meet. And today, the past and the future meet right here in this meeting about the direction of our agency. And our direction is the same as always, onward and upward. Every year, we come at this time of year to talk about the state of NASA, and every year, we do so to announce the latest budget request to the Congress. The fiscal year 24 budget, which started last October, so we're already in the sixth month of the fiscal year. It was just finalized by Congress with an appropriations bill finally passed last weekend. And the fiscal year 25 budget which will then start in October the 1st of 24. That budget was just released by the Biden-Harris administration today. Across this government, in both the Congress and the administration, we have great advocates. We have in this administration and in the Congress leaders who understand what it is to invest in NASA. And they understand it's an investment with a tremendous return. In other words, to invest in NASA is to invest in America. And 
in Americans and in, indeed in all of humanity. They understand that in a bipartisan way. They understand that. To invest in NASA is to invest in the future of all the things that you work on. Science, technology, aeronautics, medicine, innovation, ingenuity, imagination. You invest in the American economy, and not the least of which you invest in American leadership in space. And yet, despite all of that, last year, partisan political gridlock got in the way, and it put on the bargaining table a potential default of the full faith and credit of the United States government. So to prevent the United States from a catastrophic default, in other words, a default on the government paying its bills, or in other words, of not being able to pay the Treasury bonds and Treasury bills when they come due, the Congress compromised with across-the-board cuts in discretionary spending for the next two fiscal years, fiscal year 24 that we're in and 25. In other words, for those that were withholding their votes in Congress, in order that the U.S. government would not go into financial default, their price was the cut of the spending in domestic discretionary spending in two years, fiscal year 24 and fiscal year 25. Now, it's no secret that uh, NASA obviously gets great and strong support from both Republicans and Democrats. We are, as I say, uh, not only bipartisan, we are nonpartisan. But what happened last year was this small group in the House of Representatives held up the passage of the legal means of avoiding national financial default in order to get their way to have lower spending. The lower spending wasn't in the part of the budget that you can't cut, Social Security, Medicare, other entitlement programs. The cuts weren't in defense the cuts were in all other, which was the non-defense discretionary budget of which NASA is a result. And as a result, NASA has become one of many government agencies that got caught in this across-the-board spending cut for two years. Well, Congress finally passed just last Friday a fiscal year 24 budget of $24.9 billion. That's for NASA. This is less than what we, the President, had requested for fiscal year 24, which was $27.2 billion. That's a cut just in that year from the request of $2.3 billion. For those of you who are affected by this, you're part of this team. We are all affected. And I promise you, every one of you that's a part of Team NASA, that I, that we, will continue to do everything in our power to fight for NASA, to fight to increase our funding when we get out of this two-year period and the caps are lifted in fiscal year 26. So today the administration announced the president's 
request for NASA for fiscal year 25. And that budget is $25.4 billion. That's an increase of a half a billion dollars over the previous fiscal year 24. In addition, that figure, if enacted, and it's a request to the Congress, if enacted, it would amount to more than a 9% increase in NASA appropriations since President Biden took office when he asked Pam and me to lead this agency. Of all the deals that we could have gotten during the two years of the cap budgets, this is a good one. NASA fared better than other agencies and departments that are in that appropriation subcommittee report. It's a result of our advocates in the White House, in Congress, and right here in this building, pushing, pushing to get us the resources that we need to reach for the stars. I thank the President for his committed leadership to support NASA. I thank our friends in Congress who are committed to help us. And come fiscal year 26, which is not too far away, it's October of next year, you can expect that we're going to push for more resources. Why? Because our great work goes on using the resources that Congress gives us. Our work to return humanity to the moon and then reach onward to the red sands of Mars, that goes on. Our work to build from the ground up, hundreds of miles up, an economy and presence in low Earth orbit. That work goes on. Our work to transform the way we fly, leaner, cleaner, quieter, faster. That work goes on. Our work to conduct science like you've never seen it before. Science on the smallest human cells and on the grandest galaxies. Science across the solar system, across the universe. That work goes on. Our work to study, to understand, to protect our fragile Earth, to defend it from asteroids, to analyzing our changing climate and share that data with all on planet Earth. That work goes on. Our work to transform the way we travel across space with mighty rockets and magnificent solar, nuclear, and electric engines. That work goes on too. Our work to look into the farthest reaches of the universe to see where all of this came from, and to see if there is other life. That work goes on. And while all this work goes on, you guys are succeeding. What defines the character and quality of NASA is what we've achieved despite challenges. And that makes us, the NASA family, we are stewards of a great legacy. And so think back as I cast that vision, that grand panorama at the Kennedy Space Center, the scrub and the beach and the mighty launch pads, some of those launch pads that sent John Glenn on Friendship 7 first into orbit, and then uh, those launch pads, Apollo 11, the first to land on the moon. And just last week, Crew 8 sent them into the heavens. And those pads that uh, Artemis 2 and all of Artemis will launch. And upon which those pads from the success of the past 
will rise the future. We at NASA are a bridge where the past and the future meet. We work for the pioneers that came before us, and we work for the adventurers who will come after us. The Artemis generation will lead our world into a dazzling new future, and our, the NASA family's job is to show them that way. Our job is to lift them as they ride to the stars. The state of NASA, NASA family, the state of NASA is strong because the people of NASA are strong. The state of NASA is growing stronger because the people of NASA are growing stronger. Thank you for the incredible work that you do. You have made me proud, and you continue to make our country proud. Indeed, because of you, what we know in the past as the dream, it continues. The dream is alive. Now I'd like to welcome NASA Associate Administrator for Exploration Systems Development, Kathy Kerner. Thank you, Faith. We are closer than ever to returning humans to the moon and this budget supports our ability to establish a long-term presence for scientific exploration and develop the capabilities to send the first humans to Mars for the benefit of all. The science we will conduct will help us unlock the secrets of our solar system, including our home planet. And we will demonstrate new technologies with so many incredible firsts. With Artemis I under our belt, we've completed the first test flight of the SLS rocket and Orion spacecraft traveling farther from Earth than any spacecraft designed for humans has ever flown. The first test flight with astronauts aboard Orion is scheduled for next year. The Artemis II crew will be the first people to lay eyes on the far side of the moon in more than half a century. After that, we will bring on new industry partners to provide services for landing humans on the moon and for equipping them with spacesuits for the first moonwalk in the lunar south pole region. We'll be exploring a part of the moon that humans have never seen before. We'll build on that by bringing on new industry and international partners who help establish the first lunar space station and grow our capabilities for exploring the moon's surface. Through Artemis, we will lead the way to see the first woman, first person of color, and first international partner astronauts step foot on the moon. All that we do and all that we learn will prepare us to send the first humans to Mars. We know that challenges lie ahead and we know we will learn as we take each step forward. Our teams are making incredible progress today to make those next steps possible. Artemis is about inspiring humanity to go further than we ever thought capable, to be curious, to push boundaries, and to achieve the impossible. Science drives these missions, and the value of the discoveries we'll make is impossible to calculate. Science is also the engine behind economic advances in any space endeavor, and every dollar invested in, Ar in Artemis is spent right here on Earth. Exploration fuels the development of new industries and the advancements in propulsion systems, life support, technologies, and infrastructure developed for the lunar missions benefit more than us on the moon. Their applications benefit us here on Earth as well, infusing into aircraft safety, healthcare, food security, renewable energy, and disaster response. As we continue to push the boundaries of human exploration with each test flight, 
the benefits will only continue to multiply. Together, we will make new scientific discoveries, we will demonstrate American leadership and innovation, and we will bring along international partners united by peaceful values, exploring in space, and we will inspire the next generation of explorers. With Artemis, we are doing something that has never been done before. The investments in this budget enable us to showcase the best in innovation from the agency, industry, academia, and the international community, and I cannot wait to see our, how Artemis unlocks the vast potential of space for all of humanity. We are just scratching the surface of what's possible. We are just getting started. And now I will turn it over to Ken Bowersox to talk about the Space Operations Mission Directorate. Thanks, Kathy. That was pretty cool. <laughs> it's great to be here today to talk about the incredible work happening at NASA, especially the work happening in the Space Operations Mission Directorate, where we lead NASA's human exploration efforts in low Earth orbit and enable all of NASA's human and robotic exploration missions by providing launch services, communication services, spaceflight crew support, rocket propulsion testing, and human research capabilities. This is a critical time for NASA, and the work that we're doing right now is laying the foundation for how humans will live and work in space. As humanity moves from Earth to the moon and deeper into our solar system, low Earth orbit is an essential part of our exploration plans. It's close to home, making it an excellent place to perform technology demonstrations and fundamental scientific research that will reduce the level of risk faced by future space explorers. Last December, along with our international partners, we surpassed 25 years of operations on the International Space Station. Over 5,300 investigators have performed research on the station from over 100 countries, resulting in more than 4,000 publications. In this, the third decade of ISS operations, we expect scientific results to multiply as we maximize the use of this amazing platform, a national lab in the unique microgravity environment near Earth. Using station, we've looked back at our home planet, increasing our knowledge of the atmosphere, oceans, and land as we work to understand the impacts of climate change. We've increased our knowledge of the effects of space on the human body, helping us to better understand disease and develop new treatments to lengthen and improve lives on Earth. Beyond its importance as a research facility, station serves as a testbed for the U.S. commercial transportation of crews and cargo providing a foundation for commercial services available to other customers. Through our efforts with commercial industry, we expect that two new spacecraft will fly to the International Space Station this year. Boeing Starliner will launch with Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams on its first test flight with crew, and Sierra Space's Dream Chaser spacecraft will fly its first demonstration mission, delivering cargo to the space station and returning to a runway. These new spacecraft will join the SpaceX Dragon and Northrop Grumman's Cygnus, delivering crew and cargo to low Earth orbit. It's NASA's goal to continue our more than 23 years of human presence in space for the benefit of humanity. A variety of crew and cargo systems available to NASA and other users is vital to open access to space. We also need new destinations that will support the growing commercial market that seeks to benefit from flying in microgravity. This budget enables NASA to maintain the International Space Station through 2030 and continue work with our commercial partners to develop these new state-of-the-art commercial destinations, while also taking steps to safely deorbit the International Space Station, which is the shared responsibility of the five space agencies who built ISS, NASA, the Canadian Space Agency, ESA, JAXA, and Roscosmos. With our space station partner agencies, we've studied options to safely deorbit the station, and NASA has engaged with U.S. industry to procure a spacecraft that will perform the final safe deorbit maneuver. In addition to our work in low Earth orbit, the President's 2025 budget request will fund activities in space operations that affect the work of multiple NASA mission directorates. Through NASA's Space Communication and Navigation Program, or SCAN, 
will continue to provide communication services for human exploration, science, crew and cargo missions, and uh, include support of the development of the Lunar Exploration Ground Segment uh, Communications Network. We'll also demonstrate the feasibility of commercially provided satellite communication services. Through our launch services team, we'll continue to provide safe, reliable, and cost-effective launch acquisition and advisory services for over 70 NASA spacecraft missions in various phases of development. Through our human research program, rocket propulsion testing program, and funding for human spaceflight capabilities, we'll ensure that NASA's propulsion systems and astronauts are ready for all of our human spaceflight missions. Working with our international commercial partners, SpaceOps is ready to continue our work that enables all of NASA's missions, to grow the commercial space economy, to conduct groundbreaking research and development on space station, and to begin a new era of commercial space development that will enable continuous human presence in low Earth orbit. And now, Faith, back to you. Well, thank you both. We certainly have a lot to look forward to, uh, but moving right along, I'd like to welcome up NASA's Deputy Administrator, Pam Milroy. Thank you so much, Faith. Um, I just have to say that was really inspiring, Kathy and Sox. And I just want to amplify um, one of the things that the administrator, many of the things that he said. I just reflect back on my time at NASA uh, about 15 years ago, coming to an end, uh, my time in the astronaut office, and we were approaching the end of the shuttle program. Well, we've had hard times and some easy times in the last 15 years. But look at us. We have two proven human spaceflight capabilities, and a third about to be added. We are doing amazing things in this third decade of the ISS, really bringing all those visions to fruition. I think the point is human spaceflight has never been more exciting. And although we have had hard times and easy times, we stayed focused, we saw a vision, and we executed with the money that we have been stewarded with. And here we are. It's really an amazing time. And we will continue to make amazing progress as long as we stay focused on our vision and we are responsible with the resources we've been given. I'm just constantly awed by all of our endeavors, not just in low Earth orbit, but also our missions to the moon, our science, our aeronautics, uh, across the entire agency, we're working for a blueprint for responsible, sustained human presence throughout the solar system. That's just amazing. And we will continue to make progress being focused on that vision. So as we look at this budget, it's evident that one of the key reasons that we go to space is for the unique science that can only be done from space. And that could be astronauts conducting scientific investigations in orbit or sending robotic explorers to collect data and also co collecting and conducting foundational aeronautical research as we see the lines between air and space blurring. We're here to discover the unknown for the benefit of humanity. And that applies to every single thing that we do. President Biden's fiscal year 25 request for NASA reflects the administration's commitment to ensure NASA remains at the forefront of science and technology globally. Now, before I introduce our associate administrators for science and aeronautics research, I'd like to underscore a few highlights that really excite me about what's coming and what is funded in this budget. In its inaugural year of operations, the James Webb Space Telescope has unfolded so many secrets of the universe, practically upending all of our textbooks on cosmology. We've gotten a great education on the early universe, and we're just getting started. From unveiling the farthest galaxies and stars to detecting methane and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of an exoplanet, Webb's discoveries have been nothing short of awe-inspiring. And the President's budget request for science will sustain ongoing critical missions like Webb, Hubble, and Perseverance 
and also foster the next wave of groundbreaking high priority science, such as the Nancy Grace Roman Telescope, Europa Clipper, Dragonfly, while we review options on next steps for the Mars sample return. NASA remains a global leader in climate and Earth science research with a fleet of over two dozen satellites and instruments orbiting our planet. These instruments and satellites come together to simultaneously look at our Earth in multiple ways that provides layers of complementary information on Earth's oceans, land, ice, and atmosphere. We leverage that unique perspective of looking from space and studying the Earth as a planet to see it at scale, to deepen our understanding of Earth's changing climate. And with upcoming Earth science missions like NISAR and the recently launched PACE mission, NASA is further committed to helping everyone understand and tackle the impacts of climate change. This budget will also help us support President Biden's aim of achieving net zero emissions by 2050 in one of the hardest areas to decarbonize, aviation. We are at the leading edge we must accelerate research and development in aircraft technologies that are cleaner, quieter, and more fuel efficient. And NASA is actively working on that with next generation aircraft and engines that could make commercial flights 25 to 30% more efficient, which benefits our home planet, industry, and passengers worldwide. And our amazing and ambitious projects in X-planes like the X-59 low boom supersonic aircraft and the sustainable flight demonstrator just excite me to no end. We are set to once again revolutionize the way humanity travels by air. Our Associate Administrator for Science, Dr. Nikki Fox, will brief you shortly about science missions covered in the budget, but first, we're going to hear about our aeronautics research from our AA for the Aeronautics Research Mission Directorate, Bob Pierce. Thank you, Pam. And borrowing from Pam, the one word I have for what you just saw is progress. It's what we do year after year in Aeronox. So NASA's budget request for Aeronox sustains the real progress we're making in providing real value to the, to the nation and to aviation community and the flying public in ultra-efficient airliners, high-speed commercial flight, future airspace and safety, and advanced air mobility and in cultivating an innovation ecosystem that drives it all with the energy and ideas of people inside and outside NASA who ask, what if and what's next? We're making real progress in testing new green technologies for ultra-efficient airliners that, as Pam said, can reduce aviation greenhouse gas emissions by 30%. The budget will help us in 2025 to conduct flight tests of an aircraft modified to use electrified propulsion and to continue modification to the aircraft that will become the X-66, an MD-90 that will have its wings removed to make room for the experimental transonic truss brace wing. For future airspace and safety this year, we made progress in creating a sky for all where all aircraft fly safely, including those with new configurations, new shapes, new propulsion systems, and that fly all new missions. In 2025, we'll be transferring to the FAA new technology to enable operation of drones beyond visual line of sight, really opening up a new era in transportation and in services for the American public. And completing a demonstration of a digital tool that uses machine learning to improve pre-departure operations of aircraft projected to cut thousands of pounds of fuel and carbon emissions. Our progress towards high-speed commercial flight took a big step this year with the unveiling of the completed X-59 quiet supersonic technologies aircraft. And if what an aircraft looks like says anything about the, the excitement and the, the capability of that aircraft, you've got to see the X-59 because it is one cool airplane. 
And in 2025, we're going to see its first flight at supersonic speed, plus ongoing testing of the acoustic measurement systems on the ground and in the air that will be used to collect data from communities during the mission's final phase. Our progress in tools and technology development pushed air mobility forward, setting the standard for industry and academia, working towards more autonomous flight for electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, air taxis, if you will. For 2025, this budget makes it possible for us to conduct further simulations and demonstrations into the reliability of electric propulsion, noise exposure, passenger ride quality, vehicle design, and piloted handling qualities for these new novel configurations. With this budget, we can maintain the momentum on our work for NASA's wildfire management initiative and in supporting the agency's portfolio of wind tunnels and other testing capabilities. With this budget, NASA Aeronautics can maintain forward momentum, meet key milestones, mark real progress, and at nearly every step along the way, provide real value to our nation. Thank you so much, and I'll turn it over to Nikki Fox. Good afternoon. In the Science Mission Directorate, everything we do is interconnected. Our discoveries and technological innovations build off one another to advance our scientific knowledge and push the limits of what we know is possible. More importantly, our work touches everyone on Earth, and it helps improve all of our everyday lives. At any given moment, we have 140 active missions across the solar system. NASA science is literally everywhere. And NASA science is delivering every second of every day, of every week, of every year. Just last month, the United States returned to the moon for the first time in more than 50 years with a special lunar delivery from NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services Initiative, soft landing us into the beginning of a new and vibrant U.S. lunar economy in support of the agency's Artemis program. We're celebrating the Heliophysics Big Year alongside the whole NASA science community. This spring, the entire contiguous United States will be able to experience at least some part of the total solar eclipse on April 8th, bringing together millions and inspiring the next generation, our Artemis generation. And don't worry, if you can't get to totality, with the help of NASA comms, NASA science will bring totality to you. <laughs> Just two years into its mission, Stunning images from the James Webb Space Telescope are inspiring the world, allowing us to look back to the very earliest days of our universe and to reveal the deepest secrets of our cosmos. The Earth Science team recently launched the PACE mission, and it will soon provide us unprecedented views of our planet and incredible insight into the health of our oceans and our atmosphere. Soon we will be launching NISAR, as Pam mentioned, together with the Indian Space Research Organization, and that will allow us to observe changes in the Earth's surface down to a centimeter resolution. We work, of course, to get data from these and our more than 25 Earth science missions into the hands of decision makers to help improve life on Earth and, of course, to safeguard our future. Our Biological and Physical Sciences Division recently received their decadal survey, and they are busily developing transformative research capabilities um, to increase the pace of research and to drive more discoveries about living and thriving in space. We also look forward to receiving the recommendations from the Mars Sample Return uh, Response Team, um, and they will, they're going to help us bring those very precious samples back home. Looking forward to FY25, we have many exciting launches on the horizon. Europa Clipper will start its journey to Jupiter's icy moon and will help us better understand the astrobiological potential for habitable worlds beyond our planet. IMAP, Carruthers, Punch, and Sunrise will join our heliophysics fleet to study Earth's profound relationship with our very own star. 
Building on Webb, SphereX will begin to survey hundreds of millions of galaxies. The Nancy Grace Roman Telescope, set for launch in 2027, will expand what we know about our dark universe. And we will initiate the technology maturation for the Habitable Worlds Observatory to search for life in our universe. Launching in the coming years, Veritas, Envision, and Da Vinci together will help us learn how Earth diverged from its um, opposite and very uninhabitable twin, Venus. Dragonfly will cruise around uh, Saturn's largest moon, Titan, looking for the origins and the signs of life. We'll begin work on uh, Landsat Next to continue the longest space-based record of Earth's land surface, and we will also confirm the first of our Earth System Observatory missions. And we'll continue to lead Artemis science, including decadal recommended lunar and biological and physical science investigations, all as part of the agency's Artemis campaign. Ultimately, science enables exploration and exploration enables science. Of course, there are many, many, many more great things that we would have loved to have done in FY25, and we're not able to do everything within the budget, and we've had to make some tough choices. Despite this, though, the NASA science fleet continues to be strong, balanced, and doing incredible science that will set us up for success today, tomorrow, and in the years to come. I'm incredibly proud of our NASA science team, and I cannot wait to see all the fabulous things that we are going to deliver for the benefit of all. Thank you. Uh, thank you all so much. As Nikki said, NASA's work truly touches everyone. And to hear a little bit more about that, I'd like to welcome up NASA Associate Administrator Jim Free. Thank you, Faith. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us uh, today to hear about how our budget enables our mission and our mission success. I get the pleasure and honor of previewing two critically important parts of our agency, the Space Technology Mission Directorate and our Mission Support Mission Directorate. These two areas truly enable NASA mission success. You'll get a chance to hear directly from their leaders in just a few minutes, but first I want to share a few thoughts on some of the remarkable work they're doing today and what else this budget enables. Space technology is focused on advancing technologies and testing new capabilities at the moon that will be critical for our crewed missions onto Mars. Space technology works with a huge network of innovators, researchers, and entrepreneurs to solve some of the biggest challenges of living off the planet. They work with students, universities, national labs, and commercial and international partners. They bring the expertise outside the agency into and help take NASA-developed technology out into commercial applications for the benefit of all of us. You'll hear later, but it's worth emphasizing that space tech matures capabilities to go, land, and live places other than Earth. This technology is critical to the Artemis campaign and future exploration. It also ensures U.S. competitiveness and leadership that helps our economy and our national workforce. This budget ensures we can share our missions with all of humanity. The next mission directorate is mission support. In many ways, it stretches across our agency. It enables outreach via our new NASA Plus streaming platform it enables us to share content in Spanish. It enables things like our Spot the Station app in multiple languages, giving everyone everywhere an opportunity to view humanity's home in space. NASA is continuing looking to develop and inspire our youth in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and this budget makes that possible. Through initiatives like EarthRise, educators can provide their students with climate and science resources from across the federal government. Speaking of our workforce, I hope each and every one of you is as proud as I am to work at the number one place to work in the federal government. Just last week, I had the honor to give the commencement address, let's give me a lot of credit, by the way, to our newest class of astronauts at their graduation. They are an impressive bunch, and I cannot wait to see the missions that they lead. 
They are the most visible embodiment of our workforce. But I know that throughout the agency, we attract and employ people who are equally as important and equally as qualified in their own fields. What I reminded our new astronauts is that when they put on that blue flight suit, they become NASA to the world because they re represent all of us, the workforce that enables the mission. The mission support directorate, as I said, enables all of us. They provide the tools, people, and capabilities to ensure our mission success. They provide a safe, secure, and comfortable work environment, and the IT teams, resources, and innovative tools to do the work. Mission support includes the agency's legal and procurement teams who secure vital contracts and acquisitions, and the HR teams to attract and retain all of you, our phenomenal workforce. Every dollar in the budget goes towards strengthening American innovation and ingenuity and maintaining our country's leadership in space exploration. Let me introduce you to the leaders of these two directorates that directly enable NASA to accomplish our mission to explore, innovate, and inspire. First up is our new Associate Administrator for Space Technology Mission Directorate, Dr. Kurt Vogel, also known as the SPUDS. Well, he, he'll share some more details of how the technology enables the mission. And leading the support mission, Mission Support mission Directorate is um, Bob Gibbs, who provides that foundation for all the agency does. So let me turn it over to SPUDS. Thanks very much, Jim. I know what you're thinking. Oh, no, it's Spuds. He's going to tell a dad joke. I don't always tell dad jokes, but when I do, he laughs. <laughs> Sorry. Today, <laughs> we pause to celebrate NASA achievements and look at what's ahead for the agency. In my two months with STMD, I've witnessed remarkable technology and development achieved by this organization and the talented people across the country who support it. I look forward to our continued demonstration, development, and transfer of revolutionary technologies to expand the national space economy and transform our missions and to benefit humanity. In STMD, we mature capabilities to go, live, land, expand, and enable future missions and lead the na national tech base for our civil space here at home. We're advancing U.S. competitiveness. We're driving economic growth fostering diverse talent to solve our toughest technology challenges. The recent, the recent success of our JPL-led deep space optical communications demonstration is exciting. In December, from its perch on the Psyche spacecraft, the experiment beamed an ultra-high-def video from a record setting 19 million miles away. The orange tabby cat taters, great name, stole the spotlight, but the demo is the real star. Increasing our bandwidth and sending data from even greater distances is essential to achieving our future exploration and science goals. At NASA Glenn, we continue to develop and test the most powerful electric propulsion thruster in production, the Advanced Electric Propulsion System. We're qualifying AEPS for its Artemis debut as Gateway's main propulsion system. Once proven at the moon, we'll be ready for other deep space missions and exploration missions. On the science, uh, sorry, excuse me, on the recent Intuitive Machines Clips uh, delivery, we successfully tested a new spacecraft propellant gauge and used STMD-led uh, innovation during the landing. The Glenn developed technology used radio waves and antennas uh, in Odie's tank to precisely measure the propellant levels. This is one of the many efforts STMD is under, undertaking to address the challenges of using cryogenic propellants during the long-duration exploration missions. The Langley-developed navigation Doppler LiDAR was also put to the test, collecting quality data used during the flight to validate the system for future use. We're also eager for the intuitive machines to develop the Kennedy-led Prime One in-situ research utilization demonstration on its next mission. Together, we're preparing for the future, and I'm excited to share that STMD is re refining its strategic framework and developing rigorous processes for establishing tech-based priorities. In the coming months, we'll engage our internal and external stakeholders to execute this. 
Our new structure will accommodate our current work and the vetted priorities will shape our new starts in fiscal year 25 and beyond. The ambitious goals set out before us will require the agency to think outside the box. And to do those things we've never done before, STMD stands ready to innovate and develop solutions to close the gaps that remain with our technology and overcome the numerous challenges that lie ahead as we conduct vital deep space science and send humans to the moon and onto Mars. And now I'm going to introduce Bob Gibbs, who's our Associate Administrator for Mission Support. Bob. Well, thank you. I didn't know we were supposed to introduce some sort of cat video, but Spud's well done, well done. Um, I'm honored to address you today with a deep sense of commitment and dedication as I express my support for the FY25 President's budget for NASA. This budget represents a pivotal moment for our agency, providing the necessary resources to propel us forward in our mission to explore, discover, and inspire. As the Associate Administrator for Mission Support, one of the key areas in this budget for me that it addresses is the critical need to update our aging infrastructure. NASA's facilities and infrastructure are the backbone of our operations, and investing in their modernization is essential to ensure the safety and the efficiency of our missions. With this funding, we will be able to continue our efforts in upgrading our facilities, improving safety, measures, and all of the enhancing capabilities to support future missions. Furthermore, this budget allows us to continue our vital work in supporting all of the great things you've heard from all the other mission directors. From workforce development to contracting to outreach, commercial partnerships, all of these things will enable us to strengthen our workforce, enhance our partnership, and engage with the public in new and meaningful ways. Specifically, we will use this funding to invest in our workforce, ensuring that we have the skilled and dedicated professionals needed to carry out our missions. We will also expand our contracting opportunities, fostering innovation and collaboration with industry. Our outreach efforts will be bolstered, allowing us to inspire the next generation of explorers and scientists. Additionally, we will develop our commercial partnerships, leveraging the expertise of private industry to enhance our capabilities, reach new milestones in space exploration. The FY25 budget is a testament to the commitment and excellence and innovation of this workforce. With this funding, we will continue to push the boundaries of exploration expand our understanding of the universe, inspire future generations to reach the stars. Together, we will achieve the extraordinary. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, before I turn it over to Administrator Nelson for our closing remarks, I'd like to thank you all so much for joining us. And as you can see, NASA has a whole lot in store. And I think I speak for everyone when I say that we are so excited to see what's next. So, Administrator Nelson. Well, you've heard a lot today. It's all of us, we have an honor of sharing an adventure together. And we have the honor of sharing it together as the world's finest workforce. And to share this adventure alongside these remarkable leaders that you've heard today. So remember that every one of us as members of the NASA team as members of the NASA family. We are part of a great legacy. I spoke of it that we are the bridge between where the past and the future meet. We are that bridge connecting the explorers who came before us with the adventurers who are going to come after us. So thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for what you're going to continue to do. It's not only in service to NASA. It's in service to our country. But it's in service to humanity. And it's in service to this generation that is yet to come. 
the Artemis generation. So I'm very happy to say that the state of NASA is strong because of you. It is growing stronger. And through your work, your dedication, your resolve, your imagination, that dream is really alive. Thank you and God bless you.